here. So, okay, so this was embarrassingly thorough. So each of these tasks was completely independent of each other. But like when we are talking, like when people mention parallel computing, they often mean programs that utilize like more CPUs at the same time. And this is like what we said at the start of the day, like shared memory parallelization is parallelization that happens in one computer. So one computer, multiple processors, multiple processes running on those processors and, and that sort of things. You can hear words called threads, processors, uh, that mm. sort of thing. Like they are all shared memory parallelism. And it's very easy yeah. to run this in, in the queue. So you just need to specify this CPUs per task. Don't worry what is a task. We'll talk about it in a later, <laughs> but nothing yeah. else is needed. You just specify the CPUs per task for your jobs and you, you can get multiple CPUs. So maybe we should just okay. jump to the first example. First, uh, is it this one? Yes, uh, it's a bit below. Here we go. So okay. it's the pi.py that can run with multiple processors. So it can run with multiple processors. And uh, there's an example, how do you like first with S run and then with uh, S batch. So it's quite simple. You just ask multiple CPUs and then Slurm, we know that, okay, now this, it needs two CPU slots, basically uh, this program. But the, the important thing here is that when Richard is writing this, you notice that he needs to tell the pi.py to use multiple processors because like the program mm -hmm. itself needs to know that like, okay, I'm now going to use two processors because right, otherwise yeah. it might get like a mismatch, like, a pro like it might run too many processors or too little. So you want it yeah. to be that it's the same. So if you have reserved two processors, you want they usually to be two processes uh, so that like uh, two CPUs, <laughs> if you reserve two CPUs, you want there to be yeah. two processes running on those CPUs because otherwise they will have to like swap out and, and then that will create like a... Yeah, like yeah, that... two common things. Someone takes a compute, a program designed for a desktop computer that it says, oh, I'm on a, on a node with 40 CPUs, so I'm going to try to use all of them. But then it's only allocated two of them and it's super slow. Yeah. Um, so let's try running this. It's yeah. it's basically the same thing as before, but now we are using two yeah. processors. Okay. Oh, time. Oh, I'm going to use an equal sign. So that was pretty fast. So it even said it's using two processors. An important thing, especially when you're running these multi-processor things, is to monitor the efficiency. So we previously, yesterday, talked about efficiency. So if you want to, Richard, run the SF command on that job okay. ID. So we used this SF previously to check the... Um, so here we see... Uh, that the CPU efficiency. Well, can can you increase the number a bit because it was so fast yeah. that it, like let's if see. you increase the number of iterations, it says it's... fifty percent. So let's yeah. go to iterations. I'm making it ten times more. Yeah, so it takes a bit more. Okay. Yeah, if you and now run the SF yes. for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so now it's eighty percent efficiency. Yeah, so it, so it's in this toy problem, it's it's very like you need to have a larger sample size to get it. Like the startup of the startup of the whole parallel thing takes some time, so it's not like it's not getting full mm -hmm. like hundred percent utilization. So it's not using all of the processes all the time, but that's to be expected. Uh, if yeah. you want to quickly show the Slurm script, there's okay. a few mentions there. So there's this extra line here. There's S run CPUs per task uh, in the middle of it. So if you're using S run in your code, like if you want to get the extra monitoring information for each job step, just put this here. If you want the S run step to have all of the CPUs, like Slurm has this feature that you can like put give different processors uh, different amounts of CPUs. So you can launch like one program that uses three and one that uses four or something like that. And and 
usually you don't want to do that. You want to give all of the resources to your program. So either you can not use the S run, or you can use S run and just put this there. Don't worry why this this documentation there. <laughs> why why is this is technical reasons, but yeah, uh, it's it's usually a good idea to just add it just to make certain that the slurm is at the same page as what you're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else we need to talk about here, or should we go if we I go think to we exercises? We can go to exercise. Where... And if you have questions about is is my code parallelizable or this kind of thing. Put it into the no uh, notes now. We can then discuss it after the mm -hmm. exercises. So I guess our upcoming plan, there's 15 minutes for exercises, then 10 minutes break. Then we have a guest presentation for half an hour or so. And then we'll come back and continue with more stuff. Does that sound correct? Sounds about right. Okay, so we will head off to the exercises. Uh, I'll scroll down to show it, and we'll write it in the notes. Okay, great. See you soon. Bye. Bye.